Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Svenja and here on YouTube we talk all about what I'm knitting, what I'm dreaming about knitting, and fun other yarn related adventures. So if that is something that you're interested in, then keep on watching. Today we're going to be talking all about my fall and winter knitting plans and intentions. So if that's something that interests you, then stick around. <music> So I know I'm a little behind on making this episode, but September was really warm and it just didn't feel like the right time to talk about fall or winter knitting yet. So the weather has finally cooled down. I'm actually wearing some of my woolly knits, so it finally feels like the right time. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about fall and winter makes. I have um, a collection of patterns that I'll share with you. We'll talk through the details of them. And then I also have a lot of the yarn that I intend to use for these projects. So to give you a little background, I did make a episode like this last year, which turned into more a like knitting wish list per se. Um, I had a lot of patterns on my mind, but I didn't quite have all the yarn that I would have hoped to use for those projects. So I think that was probably the primary barrier to, uh, you know, making those projects, but also time, you know, we only have so much time in the day to knit and create. So I think this time around I have um, a much smaller list and have really given some thought to what I actually want to be making. Um, I feel like as I grow as a knitter, my time and um, effort is um, precious and I really want to use that to make items that I'm actually wearing on a regular basis and are made out of good quality um, materials that last a while. So yeah, so this year, you know, as important as plans are in terms of patterns, my intentions in knitting them are just as important. So first of all, my intention is definitely to use a lot of my stash yarn. I haven't been on a like strict yarn buying ban by any means, but it's really time for me to work through what I have. Um, I've been doing a little bit of de-stashing, which has been nice, but yeah, it's really time to start using what I have. So when making my plans, um, I primarily use Ravelry for pattern searching and I favorited a lot of these patterns, but I've also gone forward and made a, I'm going to call it like a lookbook on Canva, which is a graphic design software. There's a free and a paid for version. I just use the free version and feel like I get all I need out of it. Um, it's very user friendly and I highly recommend it if you're looking for something that supports kind of like basic graphic design for you know knitting planning purposes so that's exactly where I started is Canva and I made a sort of like digital scrapbook or lookbook um, of the patterns that I am wanting to knit and then the yarn pairings I'm a very visual person I think it's you know, for me, really important to stay organized. And that seems to be a great way for me to kind of see what I'm planning to make in front of me, you know, get a good idea of whether the colors are right for the pattern. So as we go through the patterns, I'll share those slides with you. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy and um, like my style of uh, knitting planning. Before we talk patterns, I just want to talk through some of the intentions that I have as well. Number one, probably being using the stash that I have, using my own resources um, where I don't have to go out and buy more yarn. There are a few projects in mind that I will consider buying some yarn that I actually don't have anything um, that would work and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, I think number one is really focusing on what I have um, and pairing projects that would work well for those yarns. So through this process, I've actually gotten a lot more motivated to use my stash because oftentimes the excitement of yarn buying seems to be, you know, as 
equally enjoyed as actually making the projects um, and that makes me really sad that some of my yarn has sat for you know months to years without being used um, and remembering back at a time that I was super inspired by something that made me buy that yarn in the first place so yeah this process you know really looking at what I have has kind of re-energized my creative inspiration to use some of those older yarns um, and kind of fall in love with them again. So that's probably intention number one. And then, you know, two being equally as important is making items that really fit into my wardrobe. And I've been talking about this a lot in my um, last uh, few like knitting podcast episodes, you know, making functional items that are basic enough um, and in colors that I wear um, that they can get a lot of wear out of or that I can get a lot of wear out of. Um, I'm you know a pretty basic dresser. I really value comfort um, and although I like to be stylish I would much rather uh, wear like you know basic things over and over again um, then like try out trendy things if that makes sense. I'm like that in my non-knitting life and um, you know as a knitter I think I'm really inspired by like different types of patterns and different techniques so maybe aspects of certain patterns have caught my eye that I want to make and work through from like a technical standpoint but in the end the garment isn't necessarily something I would wear you know, things like lots of ruffles or tons of texture um, or like really trendy colors that, you know, I'm inspired by and I really like seeing them in, a, in yarn, um, but wouldn't necessarily translate to something that like I would be wearing, you know, day after day. So yeah, um, I wear a lot of kind of basic tops with jeans or colored pants. Um, I have some like normal leather boots, clogs, um, you know, very simple. I don't know how I would describe my style, but it's pretty timeless. It's classic. Again, comfort is king. Um, so really focusing on patterns that kind of meet that, you know, general category. Um, so on this list, you'll see lots of kind of basic um, pullovers, um, not a lot of, you know, flashy designs. Um, and then also my color palette, um, I've chosen, you know, to fit in what with I to fit in with what I already have in my closet. So making things that I can quickly pull and kind of mix and match well with what I already have. All right, let's jump into patterns. I do have some whips of these projects already started. So as we talk through them, I'll show you a little bit of my work so far. Um, I won't get into a ton of the de details of like actually knitting it, um, but I'm gonna pull up my phone here and chat through the pattern just to give you a rough idea of kind of yarn weight, needle size, um, general construction. So if you're interested in these, then you have that information. I will also put a link in the description of this video to a Ravelry bundle that will have all these patterns. So if you're interested in seeing them or purchasing them, then um, that's the place to find them. So first pattern I have on my list is the Lakes Pullover by the pattern designer Ozetta. I love Ozetta's patterns. I think she makes the most classic, you know, timeless pieces and they're super cozy. So. Yeah, I've been eyeing the Lakes Pullover for a while. It is a worsted weight top-down sweater that's recommended to be knit on a US size 8 needle or a 5 millimeter needle. Um, it is, again, top-down, has these great saddle shoulders, um, and is just kind of like a comfortable oversized sweater. So I've actually already started this project. This is as far as I've gotten here. So that's my project so far. Um, you start by knitting the back, then you move to the shoulders, and then you um, kind of continue in the round. And I've already picked up the collar because I do that with every project. I really like to see kind of the sweater finished from top down, so I very rarely will leave the collar till the very end. So this is as far as I've gotten. Um, I am knitting this in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, 
which is, here's a skein of that. I have used Shelter before. It's a great wool and spun yarn. It has a lot of great um, warmth, uh, but still a great like lofty yarn. And my intent for this sweater was to have something that I could easily pack in a backpack for like winter hiking. Um, I'm often looking for like another layer to throw on and this just seems like the perfect uh, sweater to do that. Obviously I could wear this easily with jeans, um, but yeah, so far it's turning out really nicely. The yarn is a nice like lofty, uh, again, lofty airy quality because of how it's spun. Um, and yeah, going well so far. I picked up this shelter during a Brooklyn Tweed um, sale. They have them a few times a year. I forget the name of the sale, but it's um, it's like a severely reduced price sale where you have to log on at a certain time and it's a mad dash to get yarn. So I was happy and really lucky to get my hands on a sweater quantity of that shelter and it's in the color sweatshirt which is like this great kind of tweedy gray almost little specks of black and tan so loving it so far so that is project number one the lakes pullover moving on to the next pattern I'm actually wearing and I've completed it but already have another one on the needles and that is the weekend slipover or technically weekend v-neck slip weekend slipover v-neck by petite knit weekend slipover v-neck I think there's an actual weekend slipover as well so don't want to confuse you there um, this is a pattern by petite knit um, you're gonna see a lot of petite knit patterns on my list here um, so yeah I'm actually wearing the one that I've already completed and I might as well just share it with you here so this is what mine looks like here's the front and then here's the back and I'm having a hard time fitting it all on screen but this is kind of the ribbing on the bottom so my belly button is around here so it definitely fits a little bit down onto my hips and it's got this great v-neck detail here as well as on the sleeves and I'm just wearing this like white long sleeve underneath it and it's keeping me very very warm so this is a bulky weight pattern it calls for an Aran weight yarn and a lace weight held together um, and there's a few different needle sizes listed um, I think the body is knit on a US 9 or 5.5 millimeter needle and it's knit top down um, and the kind of neckline and the sleeves are picked up um, and then it's got a nice tubular bind off to give it just a really nice finish. So I used these two yarns and um, I'm thinking I actually had more of like a airing weight gauge, not a bulky weight gauge. So this is what I have left over from this project. Um, the gray is a worsted weight um, yarn um, from the company Snailden. So there's that. And I was gifted this by a lovely knitting friend whose name is Nick. I've talked about him before on my channel. Um, and this is from the Faroe Islands, so a very special yarn, and I have looked to see if I can get it again, and I think it's going to be really tough. So I was really happy to make a project out of this, and I actually have a decent amount left. I think would be enough for like a little hat, or like a little project like that. And then this is Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair, and I forget what it, colorway, I think it's called like Midnight, something Midnight. Um, so kind of a more black darker yarn and of course it came out to this like dark gray color here so I'm really really happy with it um, I don't have anything as dark as this in my knitwear collection um, I was very hesitant to go even darker with my yarn choice um, but I, I really like it it was it was a really nice knit and I'm really happy with it so far the yarn softened up incredibly after blocking so 
I love this so much that I actually cast on another one. I'm going to briefly show this to you. I'm losing some stitches here. So this is a cream colored one that I am probably more than halfway done with the body. Probably just a few more inches and then I can start the ribbing. Um, yeah, so this is knit in a combination of Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted and um, Rowan Mohair. So this is the combo here. So I have a lot of Knit Picks in my stash and when kind of going through it and looking at all the different colorways, I had enough yarn to make the slip over. However, the two colors, so I had equal parts, different colorways, which you might, I think you can actually see on camera here. There's one, one of these is a little bit grayer than the other. So these are technically two different colorways. I think Wanda and Wendy are the color names, maybe. I don't have the tags anymore, but yes, they're two different colorways. It's actually much harder to see in per the difference in person as it is on screen. So what I'm doing is I'm actually alternating the yarn every row. The So like the worsted weight I'm alternating and then I'm holding it together with the mohair. So it's helping to kind of blend the two colors together. And it's creating this really kind of cool effect here. I don't think you can see it. I mean, it definitely looks like a solid color from further away, but um, yeah. I was very determined to use this up um, from stash, clearly, because I'm alternating <laughs> skeins, which isn't the easiest and is causing this like little tiny jog, which I'll probably have to like fix a little bit through blocking, which is fine, but it's using re-iron, which is exactly um, what I intended to do, which feels really, really good. So um, a little bit more on this pattern. Um, it's very size inclusive uh, from extra small to 5XL um, and what I really loved about this pattern was that well first of all it's not a full sweater so you don't have to knit the sleeves but it's it requires a like, very certain amount of yarn that I feel like I have in stash and um, it, I have a hard time finding projects for it because it's enough of something to make a garment um, but not an entire sweater and then too much to just like make a hat because you'll have a lot left over so either way you know this project was great to kind of use a set amount of um, yarn and especially you know a project that I can even combine two different colorways um, to make a another cool project um, the one thing that I didn't talk about was the v-neck decrease so obviously it's at the front of the sweater here or, or vest and then it's also at the bottom of the sleeve so it creates this kind of like tapered sleeve effect and I did not do that on this one um, mainly because I, I honestly didn't really like think about it because I just kind of cast on the armholes and started knitting ribbing um, and then after going back realized that that had that element but I'm pretty happy with how the sleeves are now I'm I'm really curious to see how this um, beige one will fit the last pattern on this slide here is the Sophie scarf which is a super popular pattern by petite knit um, it is basically like a little shawl that has a beautiful I-cord edge. Um, it's been very popular in the knitting world. I have surprisingly not knit this, um, but I do have some leftover double Sunday, which I haven't even pulled out to show you, but that's my intent is to use up my scraps from my Marseille sweater, actually. Um, I have a lot of the color whipped cream, which is like a really nice cream color. Um, so that's my intent for that. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the Sophie scarf is, uh, it calls for DK weight yarn, but I think it's, um, you know, it's so versatile that you could use any yarn weight to knit the same type project. Um, and I do love, uh, that there's a scarf version, which is technically a separate pattern. Um, but I think, you know, if you're intuitive enough, you could probably figure out how to change the increases and decreases to make more of a scarf size. 
Okay, moving on to page two of my lookbook. I have the Aros sweater, which is a older petite knit pattern, but I am really loving how this sweater is constructed. I'm not quite sure what to call it. I think it is knit top down, um, but I'm not quite sure how the sleeves are constructed. So that is primarily what's drawing me to this pattern. However, my decision actually is driven by yarn. So this is a great example of, you know, starting with the yarn and then picking out a pattern that uh, goes with the yarn or complements the yarn well. So this is the yarn that I'm planning to use, this combination right here. And this is uh, Dance Pelsold, which is by, I'm gonna butcher this, Helholtz Old Spindry. Um, which is a Danish yarn and it is a fingering weight yarn. And then this is the rest of my Rowan Kid Silk Haze from my slipover that I was just showing you. And so I really want to combine these to make a very kind of, I don't know what I want to call it, like a sweater that has a really great halo effect. I don't know if you can see the property of this yarn is very kind of wooly and has this halo itself, but I think adding the uh, mohair here will just really make that really special. I think that combination would be really luxurious. So this is kind of what I started with and then looking for patterns, um, I was actually pretty limited for yardage. I have about three skeins of this and I have I think four skeins of mohair. So I'm really kind of flirting with like 1200 yards, something like that, like enough to make a top down sweater, but it can't have a lot of elements of texture because um, I think I would probably run out of yardage. So that was the challenge. And I really wanted just a basic like sweater I could throw over anything um, and would complement like a variety of colorful bottoms. Um, so there's a lot of white in this yarn. You can't quite see it, but I think the mohair would be a really nice effect to it and would probably lighten up the gray. So very much like a basic neutral. So the Aro sweater is what I came up with. Um, it meets kind of all my needs, um, top down, has just a great structured like neckline and I love the shoulders. And you know, despite this having stripes in the pattern, um, I will ignore the stripes and just knit in one color. And um, yeah, it calls for a lace and light fingering for a DK weight yarn, which is approximately what I think this will end up being, knit on a US size six or four, four millimeter needle. And um, yeah, I love that I could re-knit this pattern in lots of different colors because it's striped. So, um, I'm just really excited for that. So I think it'll be a really good fit. Um, yeah, the RO sweater. I think that will be probably my next cast on. Adjacent to the RO sweater is the Vienna set, which is a set of a scarf and mittens. It's a pattern again by Petite Knit. This is an older pattern of hers as well. And I believe it's in a fingering weight yarn. Let's see. Nope, it calls for DK. Excuse me. So it calls for DK. Um, a few of the yarn um, suggestions include Lang, Cashmere Premium, or Pasquale Cashmere. Um, I don't have any cashmere. Um, I would love some cashmere, but uh, that's not in my stash. And this is a pattern. I'm not quite sure if I'll get to the gloves, but the scarf is definitely something that I want to knit. And I'm going to be using some of the oldest yarn in my stash. I think this was one of the first, like, um, not sweater quantity, but like multiple skeins of a color that I got. And I'm not quite sure what I intended to make with it. Um, however, yes, it doesn't even have a label anymore. It is Cascade Yamarino, Yamarino, um, which is a alpaca. I think it's 100% alpaca. Um, I believe it's in the color sand. I think this is like going back five, six years, maybe, um, maybe even longer than that. 
either way I have three skeins of this and it it'll I think it will be just enough to make the scarf which is fine because I love this beige color I think it would work really well um, for an accessory and then the alpaca component um, will make this a really drapey um, scarf so you know this is looks like just a like tube scarf with a very with like an unfinished edge um, I considered maybe grafting them together uh, but yeah we'll see how that goes and then because this is mainly a tube scarf I can try to use every last bit of yarn which is something I'm really excited for so again I have three skeins I think what I'll do is just cast on and just knit until I can no longer knit use every last inch and make for a really nice warm scarf that I can also style nicely with kind of other matching or similar colors like that I'm already wearing so yeah that's that project moving on to the next page here we have the Eva cardigan which is a pattern by Petite Knit this is a cardigan page as you can clearly see the Eva cardigan is a newer design by Petite Knit um, it is knit in a DK weight yarn it calls for pure gint which is a Norwegian 100% uh, wool and I was really inspired by the blue color that Petite Knit knit this in. So in my stash, I do have quite a bit of blue yarn and I had just enough of one yarn in particular to make this. Um, so yeah, this is a DK weight um, cardigan. It's knit top down. Um, the yoke is worked back and forth and then the shoulders are picked up and knit kind of from there. And it's finished off with this really beautiful two by two rib, which I'm really digging right now. I think that's really popular and in style, but it's still a super classic cardigan that I think I would get a ton of wear out of. And this is the yarn that I am planning to use. This is Woolstock Worsted from Blue Sky Fibers. And this is in the color Midnight Sea. So it is a gorgeous kind of very dark teal I don't know if you can the camera is definitely picking it up nicely um, so yeah it's a like a blue teal color and it is super kind of squishy and plush yarn um, it has a really nice um, like round quality to it uh, and I think it would lend really well you know to a very basic stockinette design um, in a color that I would probably wear a lot I could see myself kind of throwing this over like a tank top or a t-shirt or something. Um, yeah, so I have three of these 150 gram skeins, um, which is on the kind of lower yardage end of the recommended yardage. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I might run out of yarn. Um, thankfully, these are also available in 50 gram skeins from Blue Sky Fiber. So if I need a little bit just to finish like the neckline or something, I don't think I'll have a lot of problem picking that up. So that's kind of the beauty of this project is I think I'll be able to use some stash yarn and have, you know, plenty of opportunity to buy a smaller quantity of yarn to finish out a project. Um, and that's not always the case. So I feel like this is going to be a really great knit. Um, and I'm super excited to cast it on. So yeah, Eva Cardigan by Petite Knit. On this page as well is another, um, you know, cardigan style knit. It is a wrap cardigan technically, and this is by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I've knit a few My Favorite Things Knitwear patterns, and I really like um, kind of the overall style. They're, you know, similar to Petite Knit where they're very versatile. Um, very kind of classic timeless designs, which I love. This calls for a lace weight yarn to be held together with a DK weight, making roughly an Aran. And um, I believe it's knit on maybe US size 10 or eight, so pretty loose gauge. 
and it's described as an oversized wrap cardigan in loungewear style. The fit is short and boxy with extra long sleeves. It has a deep v-neck and then double knitted um, edging, which you know ties into this cute little knot on the side. So this is a pattern I also um, you know, started with the yarn and then worked from there. And you're, you may recognize this yarn if you've been watching my channel. Um, I actually knit <laughs> almost an entire sweater in this combination and ended up frogging it because it didn't feel like the right type of garment. So here's the yarn. I'll show you this first. So this is um, West Yorkshire Spinner's Fleece. It's a BFL in the color Umber, which is a DK weight uh, yarn. And then this is Knitting for Olive Soft Silk mo Mohair in Dark Cognac. So together it's like this rust red. Now I knit the caramel sweater um, by Petite Knit with this combination and what ended up happening was as I was knitting it, I really loved the quality of the fabric and the overall color. However, that pattern is a turtleneck, so the color is coming like right up to my neck here. And when trying it on, I just didn't feel like the color really suited me for such like a, I don't know, close up to my face color. I don't think that makes any sense, but it wasn't a color that I felt like flattered me in that way so I did a lot of kind of reading about how to you know use colors that might not be the best for your like complexion and that sort of thing um, in a way that's still flattering and a lot of people I actually did somewhat of an episode about this if you're interested kind of all about like color theory or um, a seasonal color analysis um, it's it's not very technical, it's just kind of like my take on some of that. Um, and I got a lot of great suggestions from folks that said, you know, you could knit something that um, is a cardigan, so that way you're not wearing it like right up against your face, um, or something kind of on the bottom. So that's exactly what I'm going for. I do really, really love this color, and I do also believe that, you know, you should wear whatever color you want. Um, but for me, I think I enjoy knitting with this a lot more than it would be something I would be like wearing regularly. So I have to be super smart about finding a great pattern that kind of, you know, meets that need. I don't want to invest a lot of time um, or money, you know, yarn is expensive, um, in making something that's just gonna kind of be sitting around. So I thought the Levitate cardigan would be a great project for this, mainly because I could wear, you know, like say like a white tank or something all the way up and really have that be kind of the first color and maybe blur some of that like stark burnt orange red you know kind of not being flattering I don't know I don't think I'm explaining this well but I think you probably get the point so yeah I, I have just enough yarn to make this um, it's definitely oversized it's got some little buttons I think on the inside which would be fun to add um, I haven't added a lot of snap buttons to projects, so I think that would be uh, a great experience. Um, and overall, you know, I think this would pair really nicely with either a pair of jeans or a pair of like, you know, khaki white or pants. Um, easily something I could wear to work uh, or kind of just like throw over my shoulders if it gets cold. Uh, yeah, so that's the pattern and my yarn choice. Moving on to the next slide or page, um, you'll see the Storm Sweater by Petite Knit. And this is a newer design. It's been really popular online so far. Um, clearly it's got some great texture to it and it's knit in this like really nice light gray color. Um, I was super inspired by this and you know, I think what's really drawing me to this is the texture. I think I'm really craving a knit that um, keeps me just engaged without being too technically challenging or complicated. Um, there's, you know, I've actually started this pattern, but when reading, it sounds like lots of people really enjoy kind of working through the different, like, you know, pattern 
chunks and having that be something that like pushes them forward to keep on knitting and uh, it sounds like a, a pattern that kind of flies by so I've actually already started this like I said this is what I have so far this is just the back not much but here it is I am using Stainless Garden Pure Gint in this bright white color and I went back and forth. I was actually gifted this yarn. So, you know, I went back and forth in terms of the color um, choice. I don't have a lot of like just bright white sweaters necessarily. Um, and I do think it's something that I will wear. Um, I did really want to use like a lighter color for this pattern. So it helps to bring out some of the texture. But I'm still a little bit undecided about the white. Um, I feel strongly about using this. I have a, you know, a sweater quantity. I think it will be a really nice experience working with Pure Gint. Um, this is a newer to me yarn and I think just the process of like knitting with it, blocking, um, wearing the garment will be a really great, you know, indicator of whether I want to work with this in the future or not. Um, but the white, you know, the stark white is something I take a little pause about. Um, I considered potentially maybe dyeing the yarn or the sweater after it's done. Um, don't know exactly how I feel about that. Um, but for now, I think you know, I'm going to continue working on this. I'm going to see how it turns out. Maybe I frog it and use the yarn for something else. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a project that I'm just airing on the side of caution about. I'm really enjoying the knit so far. It's it's been very kind of exactly what I'm looking for, you know, a little bit of interest in, in pattern, um, but not like intense cabling or anything. So, uh, in terms of the pattern, let me do some of the details. Um, it does call for pure gint, um, so it's nice to be using the recommended yarn. Um, I have very similar, um, like gauge, uh, to patine it. It's a top-down pattern, worked, you know, from the back first, um, then the front and the back are joined, sleeves are worked on the round, in the round, and then obviously it has this great texture pattern all over. So, I think this will be a super fun knit. I have a feeling I'm going to be flying through this, um, just with how much I've already gotten done. This was just like an hour of knitting this morning. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, yep, that's the Storm Sweater by Petite Knit. On the same slide is a pattern I just found the other day that I am just in love with. It's called the Azalea Sweater, and the pattern is by designer... And I'm going to have to pull this up here. Designed by... Chiselli Ucardi, who's a newer designer to me. Um, she's got beautiful designs, very like aesthetically appealing Instagram as well. Um, and I've really been looking for a great cabled sweater to make this winter. Um, I've made a few like heavy cabled things and they usually take forever, um, but I feel like they're worth it. Um, I really love working through, you know, traditional like you know Irish uh, Celtic knitting patterns if that makes sense um, and I felt like this one was just really beautiful I love kind of the honeycomb stitches and the different cabling kind of up and down um, I was looking at the Moby sweater for a long time I actually have it in my library um, but uh, this one just really speaks to me love the color choice it is a like just gorgeous pinky not a mauve necessarily it's just a really beautiful color um so yeah so i actually don't have any yarn in mind or in my stash for this pattern because it's cabled it does take a significant amount of yarn so yeah yarn choices tbd on that um potentially i do maybe you know for the holidays get or am gifted uh, some yarn by my family um, so maybe that's something that I try to organize um, 
this pattern calls for um, Drops Air, which is a yarn I've never worked with before. It is a blown yarn, or a uh, blown like tube yarn, which um, I've worked with that type of yarn before, and I am a little concerned in terms of cabling, how that would hold up. Um, and then it does pill quite a bit, so I might choose kind of a more like worsted spun yarn, maybe held together with a mohair, or maybe just by itself. Um, it is a Aran weight uh, pattern, so it's gonna be really, it's gonna be heavy. So yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, it is a drop shoulder pattern, knit seamlessly from the top down, which is great. A lot of cable patterns are knit from the bottom up, lots of seaming, so this is also why it really appeals to me. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm really inspired to maybe choose like a pink or like a very feminine yarn choice. Um, yeah, we'll see as the colder months go on what's really um, inspiring me at the time. So uh, yeah, stay tuned on that. Maybe I have uh, a more definitive yarn choice uh, in a few months. Last page here on my knitting plans is a few accessories. And I love to knit accessories this time of year. Um, I feel like they're just quick projects. They're really great for gifting. And I have a few picked out here. So the first one is the Spur Hat. And this is a pattern by a newer designer to me as well. Um, let's see. It is by Hiromi Nagasawa. And it is a fingering weight pattern. The recommended yarn is Retrosaria Mondim, which is a yarn I've never worked with before. However, I have some Issiger um, Tfini, which is a fingering weight yarn in this dark green color that is perfect for this pattern. I love this hat. I love this hat. I think it is so interesting how the kind of I don't know if it's brioche knitting or, let's see. Yep, brioche pattern. I love how those decreases come together. I think that is really, really cool and fun. And um, obviously the folded brim, very stylish. I think would fit, you know, a variety of people. Um, because the brioche will probably stretch a lot, it could probably, you know, be knit in one size and kind of one size fits all situation. Um, yeah, so it's fingering weight, calls for about 250 to 285 yards. It looks like there's two sizes, small and large. Um, and you actually start knitting from the brim. Changes the style. Oh, and the ribs, so the ribbing, starts to look like a spore, which in German means like a little track, like on, like a skiing like a track like track for like skiing or sledding interesting so yeah so that's what I plan to make um, with this gorgeous yarn um, this seems to be a really it's really soft for being you know pure wool and I love the color, so we'll see how that works up. I do have a few other single skeins of fingering weight yarn that I you know, think would work really well for this project. So that's accessory number one. And the second one is a twist headband, um, which you know a lot of people have patterns for this um, type of pattern. Um, I have for many, many years used Nina Booth's pattern. Um, it's been around for a while. It does call for a fingering weight yarn, um, but you know, depending on what type of yarn you have, you can easily modify this um, in many different ways. I think this would look really great with like, you know, a yarn held together with mohair or surrey alpaca, something that would like add some texture. I think just a really great pattern to use up some scraps. Um, so yeah, I 
don't really have any yarn in mind. I'm looking at my stash over here, my little pile. Um, but I think you know, even this combination here that I said, the leftover from my vest here would work really well. Um, yeah, just a really great pattern, I think. Also a great gift knit. Uh, so I had to throw that on the list. So last but not least is the Bindle bag, which is a, another pattern by Ozetta. I think this is just the sweetest little bag. Um, definitely multi-purpose. You could fit a knitting project in it. You could put makeup or like personal supplies. Um, I just love how cute it is and think it would be, again, a great gift knit. A lot of these accessories are, um, but also perfect for one single skein I have in my stash here that's been sitting around forever. This is Juniper Moon Farm Patagonia Organic Merino. It's a DK weight yarn and it has roughly 382 yards, which is like exactly what the pattern calls for. I think it's 385, yeah, 385 yards. So this would be just perfect for that pattern. Um, there's two sizes. Uh, it does technically call for a lace held together with a fingering to give it that little um, mohair halo, but I think this would be kind of a perfect texture uh, from just a regular wool. Uh, yarn. So yeah, so that's that. Um, okay, so that about wraps my plans up. Um, I do have a few others kind of on the radar that I might include sort of last minute as creative inspiration allows. Um, I had a lot of fun kind of looking in my stash, seeing what I could make um, with what I had on hand. And I hope that you found some inspiration yourself to maybe go stash diving or knit some of these patterns that I have on my list. So yeah, as always, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below. Um, I would love to hear what you're knitting this season as well. So as always, take care, happy knitting. See you next time. Bye.